Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. And uh, we're going to continue our about once a week. We uh, have a series of classes. We're going to continue our series uh, about United States states, which means there's probably going to be 50 classes. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, um, today we're talking about perhaps, no, not even perhaps, perhaps my favorite state in the United States. It's a tiny little state you've probably never heard of. It is my home state. And I've finally gotten to it, about the 15th state I've looked at. But anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about Vermont. Uh, hello, Walla. Hi. How are Hi. you, teacher? Somewhat okay. How are you? <laughs> Fine, thanks. Okay. Walla, have you ever heard of Vermont? It's a hotel. It's a hotel? Is it? Yes, that's what I know. It's a like famous hotel or name of hotel. It's everywhere. Is it? Yes. I, I did not know that. Okay. Uh, I didn't even know that. Really? Okay. I'll take your word for it. Uh, absolutely. There's many Vermont streets in different cities. Washington has a Vermont street, Washington, D.C., Vermont Ave in Los Angeles, um, strangely enough. But Vermont is actually a state, and Oguz knows something because he knows to associate Vermont with New Hampshire. And when I translate this name, yes, there there is no translation. So, uh, is this name <laughs> or is this word English word or? Yes, indeed, it is. Interesting that you question that, though, because uh, it's it comes from the where Vermont comes from. Actually, originally. Uh, way back when, in time, it was French, uh, part of French Canada, and it actually comes from uh, French words, vert, meaning green, and mons, meaning mountains, which is, not by coincidence, the state slogan, or, uh, um, yeah, the state slogan, it's called the Green Mountain State. Mm -hmm. which is quite logical. Okay. Uh, welcome to the class, Rustlin. Hello. Just howdy, howdy. Nice to see you again. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you, Joe. Okay. Uh, Rustlin. Rustlin has been in some of my classes talking about, uh, talking about United States states. Today we're talking about Vermont. Do you know anything about Vermont? Rustling. Mm. <laughs> he knows a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. Do you know anything, um, Rustlin? I'm saving I, Ogos for my mm, my ace in the hole. No, I think <laughs> unfortunately, I think I don't feel don't bad. Remember. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Actually, uh, Vermont is my home state, and when I moved down to Louisiana in the southern part of the country, people didn't even people people would say, "Vermont, that's in New York, right?" <laughs> they thought it was a city in New York. Really, no, even Americans never heard of it. Some of them, anyway. So don't feel bad. It's it's definitely a tiny state. It's 45th in size, and it's uh, it, I think it's 48th or 49th in population. So it's a small place. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, for many years, actually, the claim to fame. I don't think it's true anymore. But not that long ago, 20, 25 years ago, there were actually more cows. Than people, <laughs> which is uh, great. Uh, okay, Ogus, you're living yeah. an hour and a half from Vermont. 
Yeah, in Manchester, okay. <laughs> in New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know what Vermonters call New Hampshire? Oh, <laughs> so we're, uh, how they call? <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the for the other yeah. students, New Hampshire and Vermont are often referred to as sister states because <laughs> Vermont looks like New Hampshire upside down or vice versa. The shape of the state is they're like a yin and yang symbol and they they kind of uh, form a box but with a diagonal line through it. So they're kind of considered uh, sister states. But all in good fun, Ogus. Uh, in, as a Vermonter, sometimes we call New Hampshire New Hamster. New, <laughs> New Hamster? <laughs> yeah. Okay. New hamster. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, uh, no offense. I hope. I hope I didn't offend you. Yeah. Uh, it's okay I because I, I, I am some hamsters here. <laughs> yeah, right. It's okay because uh, our state capital. Do you know what the state capital is of Vermont? Goose? Yeah, it's Mont Mont Montpelier. It's it's a small town. It is Montpelier, yeah, Montpelier, and in, in fact, it is the smallest capital city in the United States, actually. Yeah, about 6,000, I think, or something like that. Yeah, it's quite small. Um, you're absolutely correct. And I, uh, the name is Montpelier, but uh, let me tell you what real Vermonters call it, our, our state capital. We refer to our, our state capital like, uh, like this. We call it Mount Peculiar. <laughs> okay, because of all the crazy politicians there, it, it's a weird place. Mount Peculiar. A lot of hippies there, actually. It is a strange place. Uh, okay. Um, all right. See, so, uh, have you been to Vermont then, Ogus? Have you made the trip across the Connecticut River, which separates? Oh. <laughs> not not yet, not yet. I, I've been to Maine. I've been to Connecticut or uh, New York, but but uh, we will we will go to Vermont in springtime. So perhaps to Burlington, very close to you know the, the you know <laughs> it's the biggest state in Vermont in the north. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's still a tiny city, but it is the biggest city in Vermont. It's called Burlington. It's right on Lake Champlain. Great places to eat there. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice um, city center. Uh, um, really, really picturesque, actually, because you can see the lake and it's quite pretty. And uh, really nice shopping area. It's all open, open market. It's uh, closed to cars. So there's a very large. It's called Church Street. It's a very wide street, but it's only open to pedestrians. It's really quite nice. You can uh, have a, there are many places, little bistros and shops, many shops and many restaurants and bistros. You can get some refreshment outside, maybe. If it's a nice spring day, you might be able to have uh, coffee or, or lunch outside. Yeah, I think you'll like it. Yeah, we will go there. As you say, we will go there to Burlington, you know, to to see the nature, the big, the 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 big lake. It would yeah. be it would be good to see there. It would be, uh, in fact, uh, I know that fall foliage is very beautiful in Vermont, but also yeah. in New Hampshire too. Yeah. But uh, it it it's it's gone fall foliage, but we will see the springtime with the new flowers. Yeah, it's it's pretty in the spring too. But yeah, fall foliage is spectacular. Um, Pavel, welcome to the class. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello again. We hello again. Yeah, we're talking about Vermont. Do, do you know anything about Vermont? Have you ever heard of Vermont, Pavel? No, uh, uh, <laughs> I uh, I've uh, just. Uh, uh, heard uh, about uh, uh, rifle or another weapon in Vermont. Uh, <laughs> really? It's uh, very 
comfortable comfortable uh, state uh, for uh, uh, weapon owner of <laughs> an weapon. Uh, ah. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, it's uh, uh, crime uh, crime tried to go away from Vermont. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they uh, uh, crime people uh, afraid uh, uh, the state because uh, all people uh, uh, walk with uh, rifle in this state. Yeah, well, not not everyone has a rifle, but um, Pavel, you're not that far off. I ha I had. A a number of uh, friends who were gun collectors, but also when I went to high school, okay, for example, I might see it in the parking lot, especially during deer hunting season, okay, uh, people who drive pickup trucks, they, they put a gun rack um, <laughs> to hold their rifles behind them where they, where they would be driving. You'd have a gun rack maybe a couple rifles there. So I could, for example, in back in the days when America was innocent, yes, I'm this old, uh, I could go to high school and I would see a few uh, trucks with gun racks and, and rifles there, right there at the school parking lot. <laughs> sure. Who cares? Nobody cared at the time. Um so, you know, young teenage boys might be getting up at 5 in the morning doing a little deer hunting before they go to school, for example. Perfectly <laughs> normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and seeing gun racks is very common in uh, that part of the country. Uh, up in New England. New, uh, by the way, Olga lives in New Hampshire. Uh, New England consists of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. That whole group of six states is referred to normally as New England. And all of New England, New Hampshire, and Vermont, and Maine, has very beautiful fall foliage. Pavel, do you know what I... what am I talking about, fall foliage? Fall foliage? Uh, you know what I, mean? I don't uh, mind foliage, 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 foliage. Well, foliage. Ah, foliage. It's uh, uh, lives uh, of tree. Yes, that's right. Leaves of the tree. Leaves. Oh, leaves. Leaves of tree. Tree. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, maybe it's uh, uh, very. Uh, nice uh, for uh, look uh, for look. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, marple uh, leaves, uh, uh, maybe another leaves uh, fall down to the ground. Uh, orange or yellow leaves. <laughs> Maybe I don't know exactly. Uh, I think it's uh, the same of uh, Russian uh, fall foliage. That's ex exactly what I was going to ask you. Do, does the foliage change colors? Do the leaves change colors in, in Russia? What colors could I see, for example? Uh, uh, what colors? Yeah, in in what colors are the leaves in? In Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine, actually, they all, all especially those states, uh, have a large, uh, a large number of maple trees, sugar maples, and they're really, really spectacular because they they actually change from their green color, and they actually slowly metamorphosis, like uh, they change from. Uh, from green to yellow to orange to red to purple. So you can look at one really big maple tree and it, it will be all of those colors at the same time. And totally eye-poppingly bright colors. It's actually really cool. Looks like some kind of Salvador Dali painting or something. 
Um, yeah, the Canadian flag has a maple leaf. Exactly. Thank you, Ogos. That's exactly right. So uh, in Russia, in some areas of the country, out west, for example, they have many aspens in the United States. So it's very golden, bright gold, gold yellow color in the, in the fall. But they don't really have maples. Uh, how about in, in Russia? What colors could I see? Um, in uh, my uh, region, uh, there are uh, many uh, beer, 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 birch beaches. Birches, yes. There are many birches, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, these trees uh, have uh, the same colors on the on the autumn. Mm -hmm. Do people actually eat beech nuts? Beech trees. Do they? They actually have nuts, beech nuts. Actually, where I, my my house, we had a huge beech nut tree where I grew up. Ah uh, no, no, uh, beech trees uh, uh, grown up in the south of Russia, mm -hmm. in the Ural, uh, uh, there I live. Uh, uh, grow ground up only a birch or. Pin, pinch, uh, keder, keder, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, fa fa fear, 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 fur, 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 right, fur uh, trees. Fur, 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 fur trees. It's F I R, but it's the same pronunciation, just like uh, the hair on a. Dog or a fox is fur, f u r, but pronunciation is exactly the same. Fur, fur. Yeah. Yeah. Trees. Yes. Fur trees. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Talking trees here. Ogus pointed out that uh, this area in New England. Well, okay. I I like that. Thanks for putting that up there. Um, Maine is first. New Hampshire second. Vermont fourth. In terms of forest area, there are uh, there are a lot of protected forests in that area in the northeast corner of the United States. Most people think about the east. All right, they think of New York City and Washington and Boston and all of the East Coast cities that basically interconnect, um, and they kind of think that everything's a city. But in fact, that's if you keep going north just a little bit, it's really the most heavily forested part of America. So there's a lot of very natural uh, forest areas and lots of critters, creatures and animals. Voila! Do you have any idea what kind of animals you could see if you went to Vermont or New Hampshire? Actually, Vermont, New Hampshire, very similar. No, Unfortunately, yeah. I don't have that idea. No idea at all. Can you guess? Come on. You can guess. Deers. <laughs> Deer. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad you said that because now I can point out that we cannot say deers. Okay. Uh, this is one of those weird English words where um, we don't add an S to the word. So there are many deer in the field. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's a weird word, I know. Um, it's, I can't say there are many deers. Uh, yes, there are a lot of deer. And, of course, you guessed that because I was talking earlier about deer hunting. Uh, yeah. You are listening. Very good. Okay. Yes, there are deer. Uh, Russellin, what else? Can you guess? Mm, maybe... Um, um, Squirrels? <laughs> squirrels? <laughs> yes, plenty of squirrels and chipmunks. Absolutely. There are a lot of wild animals. Ogoos, I'm sure, knows many more. Ogoos, have you experienced yet uh, seeing a moose? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I have seen deer 
and sure. uh, I, I'm always seeing the squirrels, chipmunks just in front of yeah. our <laughs> apartment. Uh, I, yeah. I I don't have I haven't had the opportunity to see a moose, but I know that if I if we go to the north of New Hampshire and Vermont, we will see one at least one moose. Mo almost certainly, yeah, you're at, you're totally correct. Moose are like enormous. I think in the south part, there, there are not so much, so many. Right, right. I understand. Right. Yeah, I northern Vermont and northern New Hampshire. I used to do a lot of hiking in northern New Hampshire. It's really, really beautiful, and there's never anybody there. It's really cool. You can hike all day. You can hike all weekend and never see a human being. It's cool. Uh, anyway, cool for me. I, I really like that. Yeah, but lots, lots and lots of animals. Moose, bear. Um, there are wolf still, at least in Vermont. Uh, lots of deer. Uh, rabbits. Bobcats. Maybe bobcats. Or cougar. Which one? Cougar. See, okay. The University of Vermont which is the main university in the state, their uh, symbol, their their mascot, is a catamount, which is a kind of a cougar. Yeah. But, actually, it's a little bit of a misnomer, or, or I don't know, a mistake, because I don't think there are any... You hear rumors about catamounts in the mountains, for example. I myself have seen a what looked to me like a giant cat paw in the snow, but I, I don't. I've never seen a catamount. I couldn't prove it. I couldn't absolutely prove it. I don't know. But so uh, every couple of years, you hear about somebody who's seen a catamount, but I don't think they exist in Vermont or, or New Hampshire. But I may be wrong. I don't know. So it's like Bigfoot. Huh? People, <laughs> people like claim Bigfoot. that they, they, they see Bigfoot or something weird. <laughs> in right. The world. And speaking of Bigfoot, glad you mentioned that. Vermont also uh, can claim that they have uh, their own sort of uh, mythic uh, monster, very similar to Loch Ness Monster, Nessie in Scotland. Uh, Vermont borders on the west with New York State and the whole length of the state there is a lake called Lake Champlain. This lake is sometimes called the sixth great lake. The five great lakes, of course, Lake Ontario, Huron, Erie, Superior, and Lake Michigan, uh, which are in, is kind of in the middle of the United States. Lake Champlain is the next largest body of water in North America, and it lies between, well, it goes well into Canada, and it lies between Vermont and New York. And supposedly, this lake uh, holds a monster, which is called Champ. Yay, Champ. So, Ogus, while you're in Burlington doing your shopping, you can get a I saw Champ coffee cup or T-shirt or something like that. Oh, Souvenir. okay. Thank you. Yeah. We will. Perhaps, sure. perhaps we can take a picture of this monster. There you <laughs> go. You, you can definitely do that. They have a very lovely, uh, like, uh, harbor They're right there in, uh, in uh, Burlington that you can actually go go visit. There's a museum there. Um, oh. Yeah, actually, you can. You can go see Champ. Okay, thank you. Thank, sure. thank you for the information. So yeah, I, I know lot, lot, yeah. I know lots of things about Burlington now. Yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, I actually used to fish in that lake when, as a child with my father and my grandfather, and we would catch eel and we would catch catfish, sometimes lake trout, but. Uh, there's some big fish in there. Uh, so eel, eel is the a fish like snake, you know. Is That's it? right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Creepy looking things, yeah. but you can eat them. Um, most Americans don't eat them, but I worked for a Danish chef uh, from Denmark, and uh, 
he was a chef, and he he would uh, sm actually smoke them in a smokehouse. So cure them by using smoke, and and they were really delicious, actually, really really good. Oh, can, can we try uh, it in Burlington, the smoked uh, Ooh, I, eel? I don't know. Possibly. I, I don't really know. I can't be sure of that. My friend who was a chef uh, has since moved on, and I'm not even sure where he is, so I can't recommend uh, his restaurant. Okay. Because, because I like smoked salmon too much, so I sometimes Me buy too. to mar markets. Me too. Oh. I, I love smoked salmon. Oh, oh man. I'm starving <laughs> now. We're talking about that. Walla, have you ever eaten eel? Uh, no. No. Can I send you some? No, just kidding. Uh, okay. If you can, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, okay. And um, Walla, uh, all right. Uh, we talked about lots of animals in Vermont, uh, and I mentioned briefly at the beginning talking about how many cows were there. Well, can you guess what uh, one of the major economic drivers or economic industries? Let's, let's uh, far farming? Farming, yes, but a specific kind of farming, actually. Milk, something related <laughs> to milk. Yeah, that's right. Do you know what that's called? Um, oh yeah, cabbage creamery. Ooh, now I'm thinking about cheese, Ogus. You're uh -huh. killing me here. <laughs> and the oh, butter. <laughs> cabbage creamery has the most awesome cheese. Do you, you can do you actually mean cottage, cottage cheese. No, no. Well, they have all kinds of cheese: cheddar cheese, sharp, yeah, sharp, mild. They have the most awesome cheese, and if you go there to where they actually make it, it's really cheap. So you, uh, I would make little trips there and buy like whatever five oh, kilos. Oh, I know. I, I, oh, okay. I, I bought your I bought your in the market basket. You know, uh, that there were carrot uh, cheddar cheese. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, me too. I haven't yeah. had it. Now I live in the Philippines. I haven't had it for eight years. Ah. <sighs> I totally miss it. Walla, do you like cheese? Uh, it uh, competes oh, with so cancer we should, we should and cheese. Be my <laughs> uh, uh, what's that, August? Um, is it compete or oh, it yeah. is uh, like compete with Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Yes. Wis Wisconsin is famous for cheese. And yes, there's a bit of a rivalry there. Okay, a, rival, a little bit competitive. New York, New York also makes some nice cheeses. New York, Vermont, Wisconsin. Yeah, they they're trying. Is this out. interesting a place for for a student? For a student? Yeah. Uh, well, there are a couple of nice schools there, actually. I don't know if they can brag about it, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's something to brag about. Actually, the most expensive school, university in the United States is located in, okay. in Vermont. But also, uh, the University of Vermont, for many years, I, I think it slipped in the rankings, but for many years it was known as one of the very top party schools. Woohoo! <laughs> So if you like to party, um, because I'm looking for a school these days to start the next fall, and really? uh, because you describe Vermont as you know green areas and all that stuff, so I think it's it's a good place to live there. Yeah, it's a great place to live. Crime is very low, very low. Um, you know, a murder happens every five years or something, and it's very seldom, and it's usually a lovers quarrel. Um, and uh, the thing I the thing I love about Burlington, for example, where it, Burlington is a is a college town. Okay, mm -hmm. it's known as a college town. Um, we can use this for any city anywhere in the world that has many universities. Burlington, even though it's a very small city, something like thirty three thousand people, it has five universities. 
Okay. Well, I think four, and then one that's in the neighboring town, right next to the border of Burlington. So, in other words, voila, that translates to many young people running around. Okay. Um, and a lot of nightlife, a lot of coffee shops, a lot of used bookstores, uh, a lot of things that young people like, uh, nightclubs and uh, lots of stores that sell sporting equipment like uh, camping equipment and skis and stuff like that. It's a very, it's a very youth-oriented city for sure. What's that, Walla? What was your question? What's about the weather there? The weather. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> it's Vermont is cold. Okay. It is just cold. Uh, all right. It has large fluctuations in temperature. Let me see here. Uh, I believe the highest temperature ever recorded was 105 degrees or what you would call 41 degrees centigrade. And the lowest temperature, which it shares with a place in Maine, is the lowest in the United States, other than other than Alaska. It was, uh, let's see, negative 46 centigrade. Wow. So it can be cold. The average mean temperature, which is to say the temperature that is the most normal throughout a whole year would be about six degrees centigrade. Um, it's really hot like in July and August and then it's really cold in January and February. And the winter pretty much starts usually it starts snowing on the ground uh, around Halloween which is uh, end of August, uh, end of o October. I, I I remember many times trick-or-treating with snow on the ground. So it starts snowing at the end of October, and the snow melts in May. So it's a long winter. <laughs> it's a it's look like Colorado. It's a long uh, winter, too. It's a long winter. And in the mountains, I remember hiking on the 4th of July to the highest mountain in Vermont, which is Mount Mansfield. And, uh, and um, in fact, there was still snow. There's some caves up there. Cave of the Winds, it's called. Anyway, there was still snow, packed, lots of snow, packed into the caves, which was nice on a hot July day. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so there, and it has snowed every month of the year. It is possible, historically, not normal, but possible. So it's kind of cold, but actually Burlington is a little, because of the warming effect of the lake, the lake effect, it keeps it a little bit warmer. So it's, it's a little bit warmer right in Burlington if you're thinking about going to university there. Um, anyway, yeah, mostly it's cold. <laughs> lots and lots of, in Vermont, uh, okay, uh, we're talking about industry, dairy farming. Uh, Okay. Russland, do you have any guesses? Uh, other talking about other industries? Um, I could say that uh, maybe um, uh, in uh, there are a lot of um, trees industries, so forest industries which is connected with the uh, uh, trees. Trees. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, lumber. Okay. When we're processing, talking about trees to, as building material, um, we're talking about, we use the word lumber. So a lumber industry. Uh, yeah, there are quite a few lumber yards and um, there are usually contracts with uh, the state or state forest land, um, some lumber companies are allowed to harvest so much wood, so much, so much lumber in so many years. I don't know. There, it's complicated, but there's many rules. But yes, you're absolutely correct. That's right. 
Dairy farming, by the way, I almost, uh, how could I not mention um, the one of the most famous businesses in, in Vermont, which also has to do with dairy, Cabot Creamery, great cheese. Of course, uh, whoops, can't make the end sign. Uh, of course, uh, Ogo's you're probably familiar with, Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, you know cream. Ben and Jerry's? <laughs> yeah, ice cream. That's yeah, right. Ice, ice cream. Uh, on your way to Burlington, actually, as you're going up Route 89, um, you're going to go past Waterbury. If you get off the Waterbury exit, like uh, not even a half a mile, a quarter of a mile off the highway, it's kind of hidden, all right, a little bit. I know, maybe it's a mile off the highway. Anyway, it's a little hidden. You have to go around the mountain a little, around the hillside. You can go to the Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream Factory. Yay! And you can get free ice cream. Yay! Really? Free? Yay! Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. My friends used to work there. I used to have numerous friends who worked there, and they get uh, four pints of Ben & Jerry's ice cream every week. That's one of their perks. So yeah. they would actually get really sick of Ben and Jerry's. So it was great. Yeah, it's, it's a great job. <laughs> yeah, it's a great job. Great to be friends with somebody <laughs> who has that job. Free ice cream, really good, unbelievable, unbelievable quality, delicious, awesome ice cream. Actually, very good. Okay, uh, dairy products, dairy farming. All right, lumber, absolutely. Pavel, can you? Uh, do you have any other guesses about industry in Vermont? Um, maybe uh, in any state uh, 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 makes it makes uh, uh, a maple syrup, a lot of maple syrup. A lot of maple syrup. Yep. And Ogus and I might argue because um, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, they're very competitive about who makes the best maple syrup, as well as uh, northeastern Canada. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, that's exactly right. <coughs> Again, very competitive talking about who makes the best. Um, yeah. Maple syrup. Wow. Awesome really awesome smell when they're cooking, steaming the maple syrup. Uh, I, I lived, uh, for a while, I lived in a, an apartment right next to a major maple syrup refinery. refinery? What do you call that? Uh, where the production plant? I, I don't know, but uh, anyway, great smell. Uh, yes, I use uh, this uh, syrup in uh, my cooking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh no, not uh, not I, <laughs> not me. Uh, my wife <laughs> uses it. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Okay, your wife uses it. Okay, very good. Yeah, yeah. If you've never had real maple syrup, there are a lot of stores have that fake corn syrup, whatever it is. It's not real maple syrup. You you got to treat yourself to real maple syrup because it's it's they can make fake maple syrup, but it's never the same. It's it's too sweet or it's the flavor isn't right. Yeah, real maple maple syrup is just awesome. In the spring, uh, actually, there's something called sugar on snow. Oh, goose, have you ever heard of that? Yeah, well, I well, heard that sugar on snow. Uh, but but well, in Turkey, we 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 uh, put some uh, how can I say grape syrup uh, onto the snow and eat it. So I ah. this, I think the different ver different version. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. In the uh, in Vermont and most of northern New England, there's um, a maple syrup season, uh, maple season, it's because there's only about three weeks that you can actually harvest the sap from the maple tree. It's a very short season, and then it's that's it. 
Um, so they uh, will often have there's there's a, usually a number of like uh, little events to celebrate, if you will, the the sugar season. It's called sugaring season, sugar season. And one of the activities they always do, and you can try this at home. They take uh, maple syrup, nice and hot, and you you pour it like in a line uh, on the snow. Okay, and then you can take a, a fork or some kind of stick or something and twist it and twirl it, and the the syrup forms like taffy, like candy. It's sticky, and it it sticks together and it makes like a ribbon. And you can curl up the ribbon and eat it, and it's awesome. It's delicious. Uh, so we we have we have to find the snow from. Uh, the places far away from cities <laughs> to avoid, you know. Yes, it, you need nice, so, yeah. clean snow. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it might be dirty just in front of the apartment, but yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday, uh, I just browsed on internet the dates for uh, map, map, maple syrup, you know, weekend maple syrup uh, festival. So I found that both in New Hampshire and Vermont. It's yeah. the 22nd and 23rd of March, huh? so we can visit the farms and just see how they process. Great. Okay, there you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a it's a big deal. It's kind of funny, you know. Living in Vermont, you have these these weird things you don't think about, and uh, I mean, they mark time in a different way. Um, okay, it's okay. It's the holiday season. You have Christmas and then the New Year's, and then the next season in Vermont. Is cabin fever season, and that's February, where everyone sits in the dark, <laughs> freezing to death, and wants to commit suicide because it's so cold and dark all the time. Ooh, cabin fever season, and then uh, after that, you have sugar season. All right, and people make maple maple syrup. Then after that, you have spring for about three days. <laughs> then it's summer. Uh, and in the summer we have the dog days of summer. Oh, I almost forgot. January we have January thaw. For it's very cold January and February, but for some reason in January it's very normal to be really, really warm for one day, one to one day to five days, six days, maybe a week. Just un ridiculously warm. Like instead of being zero, it's sixty degrees. Like a huge. Shift. That's Fahrenheit, but huge shift in temperature. All right, then you have spring, and you have summer, and you have the dog days of summer, which is in August. It gets very hot for a couple weeks. Um, then you have the fall, and you have Indian summer. Again, a part usually during October, where suddenly, even though it can snow in October, suddenly the temperature rises for, again, a few days, a week, like that. It happens every year. Very odd, but it, it it happens every year, and then um, yeah, and then on to winter again already. So uh, in the fall, okay, which we talked about, the fall foliage. That's also known as the leaf peeper season. <laughs> Have you ever heard that before, Ogus? Have you ever heard of leaf peeper? Uh, no, I, I I just heard fall foliage. Fall foliage, okay. Well, we cynically Vermonters call it leaf peeper season, or sometimes uh, even more cynically, we might call it blue hair season. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. No, in uh, November you have to have the deer season. There's three weeks where you can hunt deer, so. Everybody knows it's deer season. The men all disappear and go off to deer camp into the forest. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, fall foliage. Sometimes we might very cynically call it blue hair season. Why would we do that? Um, Pavel, do you have any ideas why we would say blue hair season? Blue, uh, blue hair. Uh, maybe it's genera, uh, genera, uh, blue, uh, 
Uh, it's very cold, maybe. Ah, I no. Actually, it's during fall foliage. We can call it fall foliage or leaf peeper season or very cynically blue hair. Blue hair yeah. season. <laughs> uh, can anybody guess why do we call it blue hair season? Oh, my goodness. Strange. Uh, maybe it's like sad, uh, sad. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if you guys experience this. No, no, no guesses. <laughs> uh, I I don't even remember blue color. <laughs> yeah, right. That's because they're the well. Foliage. Think about this. Think about this, Ugus. Remember that in the fall, with the fall foliage, of course, there are many tourists who come to take pictures and see the beautiful colors. Uh, often there are busloads, buses, and buses and buses and buses full of old people generally retired people oh from canada yeah yeah well, many are canadian yeah some are from the northeastern states um, cities but this it's a cheap vacation all you're doing is riding in a bus looking at the beautiful scenery so it's not like you're surfing or you know jumping out of planes or anything so old people Old people, for example, come in buses. They come in droves. They come in a flood. There are so many old people in Vermont in October. It's ridiculous. So as you look out over the restaurant or you look into the bus or you look on the street, all you see is that weird blue hair that old ladies have. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, blue hair season. Yes, that strange color that women dye their hair after their husband dies, and then they go look at leaves. Crazy. Uh, um, so, so anyway. it's a bluish color? Yeah, it's kind of uh, like my background here, like this, the color behind me. It's, it's, it's uh, weird. I see. I don't know what it is. I remember. I remember that those did that kind of buses here. I'm sure. I once saw uh, in New Hampshire a license plate uh, which says Nova Scotia from Canada. It said what? Say again. N Nova, the the state name. Uh, ah. Nova Scotia. Ah, Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. Yeah, oh yeah. Have you it? Ah, yeah. Okay, sure. Yes, all right. Oh, God, I, I think I remember that. I remember there were big tour groups from there for some reason. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. Okay, so obviously another industry which I've hinted at over and over and over again, and the largest industry in the state is, who can tell me? That's right. Ping pong balls. No. <laughs> uh, tourism is that there are many. Okay. In the fall, tourists in the summer, people on vacation come to hike in the mountains or play golf. Um, and in the winter, there are many ski resorts in Vermont, also New Hampshire, Maine. But uh, lots of lots of great skiing to be had in Vermont. Skiing and snowboarding. There you go. Uh, another Vermont company, which you guys may be familiar with. Have you guys ever heard of Burton? Uh, Pavel, do you know Burton Boards? Burton? Ah, yes, I have. I have these boards uh, for snowboarding. Right on. Okay, well... Uh, actually, my hometown is where they came from <laughs> originally. They go up to the mountain where I grew up and where I skied to try to test new boards. And if you happen to be there, um, you can say, hey, can I try it out? So you, you could be the first one to try a new board. It's kind of cool, kind of a cool perk. And they're often up there at the mountain um, checking it out. Yeah, Burton Boards comes from is uh, based in Vermont. Uh, yeah, 
my one of my favorite things about Vermont, however, uh, really cool and uh, is the history. And actually, Ogus, if you go up to uh, Burlington area, you you may it's a little bit out of the way. You're gonna have to drive forty, probably forty five minutes south. Depending on traffic, 30 to 45 minutes south from Burlington, um, there's a museum called the Shelburne Museum, and it's a very weird kind of museum. It's not like one building. There are many buildings. There is a steamship, which is on land, but it's a real steamship, 150 years old. There are different, really totally different types of one has very, very anti-colonial, 1776 kind of stuff, and another one has, uh, I don't know, World War II stuff. I don't know, very different. You have to walk around. A lot of it's outside. It has uh, art. Um, it has, like, a full apothecary, which is like a drugstore from from um, like 1800 or something. It's kind of cool. It's interesting. Oh, so, so there are lots of, there are many places to visit uh, yeah, it's, as a museum. Yeah, it's one museum, but it has, it's art, history, oh. natural, um, some natural uh, displays, natural, um, you know, animals and plants and fossils and so forth. Very Kind of eclectic, I guess. Yeah, eclectic museum. I guess you could say that. And they've actually got some really nice stuff. Some Monet's and Manet's. Uh, they have some very nice paintings because one uh, in the turn of the century, one of the richest family, the Vanderbilts from New York City, also had a home in Shelburne. So they smuggled up some of their stolen artwork <laughs> Which is still in Vermont uh, now. Yeah, it's crazy. Can you type the name of the museum here yes, uh, on I can. the chat box? It is also the name of the town. Okay. So the town is Shelburne, and the uh, yeah. museum is called the Shelburne Museum. It's it's a very interesting place, and it's it's really cheap. Oh, okay, right? thank you very much. Negligible, like two dollars or something. Anyway, yeah, on a nice day. Go there on a nice day. I wouldn't go there on a rainy day because you've got to walk around out outside. So if you got really nice weather, it's, it's, very, it's in a very beautiful place, too. It overlooks the mountain. You can see the lake and then the mountains of New York across the lake. It's really quite – it's in a very pretty place. It's separated from – it's – it's very isolated from anything else. All you see is the museum. You can't see any other houses or city or buildings or anything. Kind of cool. Um, okay, great. <laughs> sure. Uh, cheap stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, one, one thing I like to do when I was in Burlington, or they have a really big, uh, really long bike path. Actually, in Vermont, they're very fond of bike paths. Good place to ride bikes. Um, that goes all along the, the lake for miles and miles and miles, actually. That's kind of cool. Uh, okay. We've only got like a minute left. Does, does anybody have any questions about Vermont at all, whatsoever? Um, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't talk about the personality of Vermonters. Oh my God! Um, and how other Americans see Vermonters? Well, it's very interesting because Vermont was the first state to abolish slavery, the first state to allow women to vote, the first state to allow civil unions, the first state to allow gay marriage. First, 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 first. It's just over and over and over again. This, is known as a very liberal and progressive state, which sometimes is admired <laughs> by other Americans and sometimes despised, <laughs> hated by other Americans. 
because they think that uh, America, uh, Vermonters are too liberal, too, I don't know, a bunch of hippies and, uh, you know, smoking marijuana, sitting around and being gay and all that kind of stuff or whatever. So some people uh, don't like that and some people admire it, so I, I don't know. But really, 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 real Vermont, you, yes, you have a lot of hippies, very liberal people. You also have a lot of very conservative, old-fashioned New Englanders, farmers, and people that, you know, carry around their rifle all deer season in their truck and, you know, chew tobacco and spit on the ground. Basically, rednecks. All right, good old American rednecks, poor, poor white people. So you have a mix, and then there's a, then there's a, again there are many universities. So you have a lot of intellectuals running about. Um, you're going to find a lot of famous authors and scientists and people like that living in Vermont. Uh, okay, that's about it. But mostly, everybody in Vermont is very pleasant. And there's really no crime. Nobody gets robbed in Vermont. It's nearly impossible. Um, this doesn't happen. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for joining the class. Have thanks. fun, Ogus. I'm, gl I'm glad I Thank gave you very much. good info. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. It will... Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Bye you. for now.